Hello and welcome to the UK Grad Fest 2020. Um, I'm Charlie and I'm a graduate from ArtsEd and today our wonderful cast will be performing our Zoom friendly version of Alan Akebourne's House and Garden. Uh, you're currently watching House but our fantastic actors will be performing both plays at the same time on two different Zoom calls um, as the show is a diptych uh, which means the plays are linked and are usually performed in the same theatre in different auditorium. Um, you can watch the other part of the diptych um, on YouTube when it's uploaded if you didn't catch it on Wednesday because we also performed on Wednesday um, and you can watch all of the other amazing plays that have been directed and performed by some super talented graduates from all over the country coming from all different drama schools. Um, we really, you've probably all heard this before but we really wanted to direct this play because we read it in our Corona Days Play Club uh, which is um, just a, something that was founded during quarantine um, and we meet a couple of times a week and read some plays um, and this one was just so silly and fun and witty and joyful and we thought it would be great to bring it to life uh, whilst also being a great technical challenge uh, by trying to put it on Zoom. Before we start, we'd like to shout out to that play club um, and we'd like to thank Alice and Liam for putting this whole festival together and giving us the opportunity to create something wonderful. We'd also like to thank Jack Cray and Cynthia Chung for all their enthusiasm and technical support. You've been amazing and we could not do it without you guys. Um, I'd personally like to thank Nadia for being such a wonderful person to work with. And last but not least, all the wonderful cast who have put in heaps of effort and who inspired us every single day of rehearsals to do all these wacky things that we got them doing. Um, we've honestly made some great friends from this no matter how tonight pans out. Um, if you take a look at the chat box I will post a link to our Just Giving page um, where you can donate to our chosen charities which are Industry Minds and Black Lives Matter UK and we've been suggesting a donation of £2 however we know that's not always possible so instead you can read more about these charities and the amazing work that they do and share more information about the Grad Fringe Festival. You can also find out more about the other performances and events on Twitter at Grad Fringe Fest and on Instagram at Grad Fringe Festival. Um, the show has an approximate running time of two hours and five minutes with a short five minute interval in between so please grab any drinks and refreshments and snacks that you'd like to have as you watch the show um, and as you can imagine running two plays at once on zoom has many technical aspects so I'm just gonna jump off of this now and please be patient with us whilst we get the shows um, running starting at the same time thank you so much get comfortable and enjoy the show no one can see you don't worry House by Alan Akebourne. Act one, scene one. Saturday, August 14th, 8 a.m. The summer sitting room at the house. It is an impressive ground floor room at the back of a Georgian building which overlooks the terrace and small formal garden. Beyond this is a flight of stone steps leading down to the less formal lower meadow beyond. The room itself has a number of floor to ceiling windows, two of them French windows which lead onto the terrace. It is comfortably furnished in the tastefully shabby, cluttered, casual English country house tradition. Two other doors lead off, one to the hall and rest of the house and double doors into the dining room. Trish, a woman in her 40s whose soft English beauty has only very faintly faded, enters from the hall. She surveys the room and its clutter, sighs, sniffs the air with mild distaste, goes to the French windows and opens them. She makes for the hall door again, then pauses to pick something up, straighten a cushion, 
a token gesture towards Tidy and the untidyable. As she does this, Teddy, a rather red-faced man also in his 40s, appears outside the French windows. He is wearing old clothes and boots. I'm just taking Spoof out for a run in the meadow, all right? So if anyone phones, can you take a message? Tell them I'll ring them back in a minute, okay? Trish? It's just it's possible that Renee might call to give me an update on when he... Oh, for God's sake, Trish. We cannot keep going on like this, woman. Trish, this is a very important day for me, you know. If you copy out for me, I will never forgive you. Do you hear me, Chris? <laughs> yes, all right. Spoof! Stop there at once. Spoof! Oh, give me strength. Oh, I don't know. I'm the bloody invisible man round here. Nobody takes a blind bit of notice. Might as well not be here at all. I'm just a hole in the ether, at least. <laughs> Spoof! Will you just simmer down, you stupid dog? <laughs> Never hear a heart my head denies with such insistence. How do I ever trust a heart which doubt drowns out with such persistence? How will I ever feel my heart whilst caution proffers such How could I ever give my heart when I deny its whole existence? Oh, good morning, Sally. Were you talking to me? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, what was all that about just now? When? Was that dad? What are you doing? Up and dressed. I heard him shouting. It's not even midday. Yelling his head off. What are you up to? It's Saturday. Had you forgotten? I've got a meeting at nine. Don't say you didn't hear him. No, I heard spoof. Yes, and dad. No, I only heard spoof. I think we'll have to use the big table. We always have this problem, don't we? The small table's too small and the large table's too large. We either have to have three people to lunch or 46. What's this meeting then? Up at the school. Oh, is that why you're all dressed up? I'm dressed up because we have enlightened teachers who encourage all sorts of activities outside normal school hours, but a reactionary head teacher who won't allow any pupil on the premises unless they're in school uniform. What's the meeting? Anything important? Senior political group. Oh. oh. We'll never get seven of us around the table. We'd all be eating off each other's plates. Have I got to be here for lunch? You certainly have. I could eat in the kitchen. You'll eat with if us. help, I could eat with Izzy. Sally, you'll eat with us, please. I thought it might help, that's all. Well, it wouldn't. I need you to converse and pass things. No. French film I'm stars are not... French film stars are not exactly my strong point, you know. Nor mine. That's beside the point. You speak French anyway. I mean, I haven't even seen her film. Well, I don't think anyone has seen the film. Not round these parts. Jake probably has. By the time they get by the time they get round to showing a film here, most of the stars are dead. They're bound to have seen it. <laughs> What's it called, anyway? Uh, the Hang On. Uh, I did know the um the um something or other. Is it French? No, English, I think. Well, American. Uh, and how come she's in this neck of the woods? I'm not quite sure. She was suggested by her agent. Our committee originally wanted the other one, but the very famous one who was also in the film, but she was unexpectedly unavailable. Oh, the unexpected, that's it. So the other one was suggested. Uh, Lucille thingy, who isn't really famous at all, but is apparently very, very good, according to her agent. Just nobody's ever heard of her. Well, don't ask me. I haven't heard of anybody. Anyway, she's agreed to open our fate, which was more than the other one was, which makes her okay in my book. Can you man the tombola as usual, please? Oh, you're not going to make me stand out there all afternoon in the pouring rain like last year, are you? It's not going to rain. Of course it's going to rain. Nonsense. The forecast says... It always rains! <laughs> Last year that tombola drum was full of water. All the tickets were floating. Oh, come on, Sally. For goodness sake. Lighten up, darling. Everything's such an effort, isn't it? You're young. Enjoy it while it lasts. Standing in the rain? 
Well, that's all part of it. Selling soggy tickets for prizes people won last year and have put back this year, praying they won't win them again. Absolutely. All part of the fun. When I was your age. Yes, all right. We used to dance all day on the lawn in our night dresses. I'm amazed you still bother, really. How do you mean? With all this going on. What? All this that we're not supposed to talk about, but we all know about anyway. I don't know what you mean. I've noticed. What time's this meeting of yours? You two want to get yourself sorted out, you know, instead of giving me lectures on lightening up. If it's nine o'clock, you better get moving. You hear what I'm saying, Mum? I'm serious. Know what buses are like on Saturdays. Kate's collecting me. Listen, if you would just... You take advantage of him far too much as well. What? Jake, he trails after you like a lost puppy. You just use him when it suits you. I do not. Yes, you do. I don't ask him to follow me around, do I? You don't send him away either, do you? It's what makes him happy. It's called using people, Sally. They care about you. You care nothing for them, but just use them because it suits you. That's terrible. What a terrible thing to say. It's all right. Not blaming you especially. Well, lots of us have done it. All I'm saying is try not to. For one reason, it'll rebound on you later. It always does. What are you talking about? I'm saying that in my experience, life pays you back. Sooner or later. Believe me, I know. You behave badly, thoughtlessly towards someone as if their feelings weren't important. Then one day... They behave like that to you. <laughs> well, I'm not going to let that happen to me. I can tell you that. Never lose control. That's the secret. Keep control. Of other people? No, of myself. Don't let yourself get used, get manipulated, taken advantage of. And of course, no, don't do it to other people either. Which I don't, as it happens. I don't use them, not at all. Well, even more alarming if you don't realise you're doing it. Yes. Well, lay the table up like that. It's another Get Sally morning, isn't it? And don't you dare put me next to that man, either. What's that? Uh, Gavin, who's it? What's it? I'm not sitting next to him. Well, why on earth not? I seem to remember he was very charming. Oh, yes. Novelist? Political wheeler-dealer? Right up your street, I would have thought. Sorry, hardly my kind of politics, Mum. Oh, well. Karl Marx wasn't free for lunch, unfortunately. Really? I'd love to know what he's doing here. He's coming for lunch. What, travelling 200 miles from London just to have lunch? All this I'm an old friend of Dad's. Highly suspicious. Being a contradiction in terms, you mean? Listen, seriously, if you two want to talk about things, uh, about what's happening, it affects all of us, not just you, Dad and Joanna. But there's Jake's father as well, isn't there? There's Giles, and then there's Jake. I am thinking about other people, you see. And me. Well, there's me. You see, so we have to talk, don't we? I don't know whether to use the cloth or the plain wood with mats. Oh, this surface is totally wrecked. We should have never used it as a ping pong table. Oh, hello. Hi. Oh, who's that? Oh. Jake, good morning. Good morning. I'll shut the door. Leave you two in peace. Sally's got something to say to you. Has she? I parked the car down by the gate, walked up through the garden. Why'd you do that? Well, <laughs> I just thought that uh, it might be nice for us, for us to uh, walk through walk through the garden, seeing as it's, um, it's, uh, such a, <laughs> it's such a, um, it's not raining. What did you want to tell me then? What? Your mum said you had something to say to me. Did you? What is it then? I have no idea. Ask her. What's that? Oh, uh, it's my speech. Ah. Uh, for the meeting? I was up half the night with it. Some of them are so stupid. If you don't spell things out of words of one syllable. <laughs> yes, I know. 
Our features editor always I'm gets across is that in politics, any sort of politics, local, national, these days it's tactics. It isn't always simply a question of voting for what you want. No. Sometimes you have to vote for what you positively don't want in order to achieve the longer term aim of getting something you do want. You see? Tactical voting. Fact. Colin Theaker is the most unpopular MP this constituency has had since records were started. He wasn't even that popular when he was elected, and in four and a half years he's managed to half that support. Pretty remarkable, even for Colin Theaker. I know. We ran that article recently, actually. Thank you! He's a crook! Which doesn't help. Well, we don't know that for certain. He is! He's a crooked little shit! You're not going to say that in your speech, are you? Of course I'm not! <laughs> Good. Even his own party, which is made up almost entirely of crooks, is a little nervous about him. They'd replace him tomorrow. Only if they did, it would amount to a tacit admission. They thought he was a crook. The point is, if Thika remains their candidate at the general election, there could be a complete turnaround. They could find themselves out in the rear, the whole lot of them. We'd be in for the first time. Think of that. A lot of ifs. Dave Bales could be our next MP. Think of that. <laughs> yes, uh, I met him once. He's, he's okay. Really? He's just... If that's going to happen, if that's going to happen, it's vital they're not panicked into replacing Thika with someone a bit more, someone who might just swing it for them. They might replace him anyway. He might. I think it's unlikely. That would be a virtual admission that some of the rumours about him are true. No. They'll stick with him if they possibly can. So, QED, I'm going to propose we call our campaign, which isn't going to be very popular with some of our lot, but you see my point. Fika must stay. For the time being. Still, sick form political society, what are we going to change? Voters of the future. Sure, we've been given a voice. Use it. I feel a bit sorry for Fika, actually. <gasps> what? Come on. Well, he had a tough act to follow. Two tough acts. Your grandfather, your great-grandfather. Things were different in those days. Still, you can't help wondering if, say, your father had decided to stand, for instance. Well, they asked him originally. Dad's not interested. Never has been. He, he told me once he thinks all politics are boring. You take after your grandfather. He had a passion, yes. I share the passion, if not the same views. Would you ever want to stand as an MP? Maybe. One day. Who knows, if I thought I could be useful, I'd be a very good one. Change things for the better. You'd be fantastic. Come on, I'm going to be late. I, I saw them again just now, by the way. My mum and your dad. Oh, God. Where? In the garden, as usual. Where did you see them? They weren't... You know, um... No, no, no. Uh, they were just standing about, pretending to talk about bushes, you know. I don't know what we do, Jake. I really don't. I've been trying to talk to my mum, but she won't even acknowledge it's happening. How about your dad? I gave up talking to him years ago. After what he's done to my mum, I never want to speak to him again. Have you spoken to your mum yet? No, she's, she's, she's quite an emotional sort of person, you know. Yes, I have noticed. And if you don't mind me saying so, I think she's seriously unstable, actually. Well, maybe a bit. And my dad, I'm sure he still doesn't know. That's incredible. Where does he live? In a plastic bag? No, he's... he's well, he trusts her, you see. He trusts most people, but actually, he trusts everyone. That's the trouble. The thing about my dad is, well, it sounds a bit boring, but I think he's just a very, very nice man. He's a bloody sight nicer than my dad, anyway. <laughs> What's the point in talking about it? They have to sort it out between them. There's nothing we can do. I wish there was, though. I, I was wondering if... Are you going to be at the fete this afternoon? Unfortunately, or risk the wrath of my mum. I, I was just wondering, uh, because I'm going to have to be there, I've got to interview this film actress, you see, and I, I, I just wondered, um, you know, if, if um, afterwards, if, uh, if you, if you, if we... If we could drive out to this place that probably, I really... Probably not this evening, Jake. Right. I, I have lots to do. Revision and so on. Yeah, yeah. 
Shall we go? Sure. Um, clean the car out, by the way. <laughs> You'll be relieved to hear. I know last time you said it smelled a bit odd. It did. <laughs> Disgusting. I think it was some old pizza. I found it under the passenger seat. <laughs> Hello, Sally. What are you doing up this early? In a fire drill house there. <laughs> She's going to a meeting. Oh, I see. <laughs> What's that then? WIs? <laughs> Political, I think. Waste of time, Sally. It's a waste of bloody time. Come on, Jake. I'm driving her there. Ah, jolly good. <laughs> Sally, Jake, would you both like a cup of... Oh, nobody here. Oh, for God's sake. I'm not putting up with this much longer, you know, Trish. I've had just about enough. <sighs> oh, Dizzy. Oh, you were calling me, were you? No, no, Izzy. I was just uh, talking to my wife in the dining room. She's not in here. Isn't she? Well, fancy that. Huh. Oh, I'll shut these doors then. Fine. Well, can get on hoovering in there. Right. If she ever turns up. Oh dear. Gone AWOL again, has she? I don't know where she's gone. She needs her feet nailing to the ground, that one. That's her father. A bit late to find one of those for her, isn't it? I'm working on it. Oh, listen, Izzy. Izzy. I'm expecting Giles, Dr Mates, to join me in a minute. Oh, yes. Uh, when he comes, could you make us some coffee? Just give me. Good morning. Good morning, Trish. No, I was looking for Teddy, actually. Oh, oh no, I, no, I, I haven't seen hide nor hair of him this morning, I'm afraid. Oh. Did you witness that, Giles? What? You see what I mean? Say again. Clear evidence with your own eyes. She comes in. I see her. I speak to her. She fails to reply. Utterly ignores me. She goes out, meets you, greets you. You ask where I am, and she says she hasn't seen me, when less than five seconds earlier, she just walked straight past me. Tell me, is that normal behaviour? Is that the decorum of a sane woman? See what you mean, yes. What's your opinion? Well, I'd have to examine her, of course, or at least talk to her, but even then, it, it seems to me more of a... in the mind, as it were. A basket case? No, 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 I don't think that. I don't know, really. Uh, not having talked to her, Teddy. Uh, um, I appreciate that as a professional you want to hedge your bets, but at least you'll agree it's not usual. No, not altogether usual. For a wife to declare her husband invisible, that is abnormal behaviour, surely, in anyone's book. It does happen, but... Does it? Occasionally. Can you ever recall it happening? No, not offhand. Well, has it ever happened to you, with Joanna? Well, over brief periods. I mean, that's marriage, isn't it? Over the years, there are always sticky patches where you tend to ignore each other for a short while. Joe's gone a bit quiet on me now and then for a couple of hours sometimes, but how long has it been like this for you? Three weeks. Yes, that is a long time, isn't it? I mean, there's got to be something radically wrong, Giles, hasn't there? I mean, three weeks. I'm not a medical man, I don't know all the technical terms, but it doesn't take a brain surgeon to see she's out of a tree. Oh, she's bloody good at it, mind you. Very hard to catch her out. I made her blink once or twice, but that doesn't mean anything. Apart from stamping on her foot, I can't think of any way to catch her attention. What about... in bed? Bed? Does she ignore you then? <laughs> no idea. We sleep in separate rooms. Ah, sorry. <laughs> it was her idea. She claimed I was disruptive in the night. I see. Teddy, I hate to suggest this, but do you think that that might be at the bottom of it? The bottom of what? Well, bluntly, sex. Well, if anything were possible where sex is concerned, I suppose. Frankly, and I don't want to sound too fiercely Freudian about all this, but I think I'd look to the sex first and foremost. You would? I would. You think I ought to try and get back into bed with her? Re-establish the territorial claim? I think you ought to... Reopen negotiations, perhaps. Right. 
Well, she's in the garden now. I don't think I should. Goodness, I wasn't talking about now. Weren't you? I was thinking tonight, perhaps. Tonight? I can't wait until then. You can't. No, listen, Giles. I'll have to tell you. Now, this is absolutely hush hush. Not a word to anyone. Right. <clears throat> the point is, I've got someone rather important coming for lunch today. Oh, yes, I know. Uh, Lucille Cadot, the French film star. She's frightfully good. I saw her film while I was in London. Uh, uninvited, unprotected, something like that. It's really excellent. Unfortunately, she gets blown up quite early on. <laughs> no, Giles, Giles, I'm not talking about that woman. I'm talking about Gavin Ringmain. Ringmain? The novelist. Oh, yes. I, I vaguely heard of him. He's coming as well, is he? Splendid. What a lunch. Thank you for inviting us. <laughs> well, he's here for a purpose, you see. You probably know he's... Well, you probably don't. Why would you? Well, he's very thick within cabinet circles, and especially thick with the Prime Minister, you see. Is he? I didn't know that. Well, apparently he writes the odd thing from the speeches and so on. Mm. He advises very much behind the scenes. Occasional low-profile intermediary, you know. Which is why he is coming here, actually. I see. With what purpose? Well, there... Uh, the fact is, they're intent on dragging me in, Giles. To put it bluntly, they're trying to persuade me to stand as their candidate here in the forthcoming election. Heavens! How exciting! Instead of Colin Theaker. Yes, well, Colin's been a bit of a washout, let's face it. Yes, total disaster, poor man. A nice enough chap. Oh, lovely man. Sweet man. Still, to be fair, Teddy, your father was a tough act to follow. And still is. Even today, that's what's holding me back, really. You know, sometimes, Giles, I look back on my family, the last two generations, anyway. My father, grandfather. I mean, old Sir Ted, who started it all. <laughs> Tough old bastard. Absolute dyed-in-the-wool fascist. But say what you will about him, he was an extraordinary old boy. Not only started the business from scratch, and built it up with a rod of iron, and ran it with a rod of iron for, for nearly 40 years, but he was also the sitting MP for nearly 20. I mean, that is pretty remarkable in anyone's book. Indeed. No, I remember he... he then my father, Tommy Pratt, he carried it all on, turned the business international, until at one time it was the nine biggest printers in Europe. Even today it's 26th biggest. Probably amazing. And then, after my grandfather had chucked us in, he also became the MP for 15 years. 15 years is another extraordinary story. Yes, indeed. I mean, th there were one... Then, along comes me, if you see my meaning. Do you want a sherry or something? I was going to ask for some coffee, but I feel rather like something stronger, don't you? Well, it is only quarter to nine. I'm not sure about sherry. No. You're quite right. Hang about. You've done pretty well too, you know, Teddy. Don't sell yourself short. You think so? You've kept the business going. Oh, how about this, you see? Kept me going. Nothing new, nothing exciting. Just kept it ticking over. Now I'm heading towards 50, Giles. I think to myself, what have I done? Halfway, well, over halfway, probably. And what the hell have I done with my life? <sighs> Here you go. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> no, when they lay me out in the family vault, what are they going to write on my tombstone? Hmm? Here lies Teddy Platt, who, more or less, kept things going. Come on. A pressing thought, you know. Cheers. Cheers. But now, suddenly, Here's my chance. I'm about to get the call. Then respond. Why not? Is this sherry? No, it's whiskey. Quite right. It's far too early for sherry. No, the point is, can I do it, Giles? That's the point. Am I up to it? Will I meet the challenge, take this country forward into the boring old millennium? Or will I just keep things going? Ticking over until the right man does come along. All woman. Sally, who knows? No, not Sally. 
She supports the other lot. I can't have her. But you see my dilemma. I don't think you should see it as a dilemma, but as a golden opportunity which you should grasp with both hands. Do you think so? I do. Indeed I do. But even so, you see my problem. Ringmain's here to give me the once over. Obviously he is. See if I'm up to it. But old school friend he may be, but I haven't seen him for 15 years. How is it going to look if my wife ignores me all through lunch, pretends I'm not even there. Well, I'm sure there are plenty of MPs wives do that. <laughs> yes, but not before they're elected. Most of them manage to put up some sort of a show until afterwards. Couldn't you reason with Trish? Plead with her. After all, it's her future too. You can hardly reason with a woman who refuses to acknowledge your existence, can you? Then we'll all rally round, Teddy. Don't worry. Me? Joanna? Um... Joanna? Yes, of course, Joanna. She'll be happy to help. She's very fond of you both, you know that. And Sally, I know she will. And, well, as for the others, maybe they won't even notice with any luck. We can pull it off, Teddy. With a team effort, we can pull it off. Don't worry. Oh, our next MP. God, this is so exciting, Teddy. Congratulations. Well, now, not a word, Giles. Not yet. Talk to you first. Yes, of course. But so exciting. <laughs> Oh, uh, how is, uh, how is old Joanna these days? Jo? Oh, she's, she's fine. No, she's not fine at all, really. I wish to God she was. The point is, I don't know quite what to do for the best, Teddy. Well, how do you mean? Well, you know Jo, she's quite highly strung, and lately she's just so up and down. Crying for no obvious reason, getting drunk, going out for long walks on her own. I mean, we always used to walk, to walk together, but now it seems she doesn't want to be near me, you see? And I know it's me. I, I don't, I don't seem to, uh, seem to be able to give her what she wants. Frankly, in any department, if you know what I mean. Ah. Oh. I mean, if you want to know, the sex was always a bit iffy. She's not a, oh, she's not a, she's not a, God, I feel so disloyal even saying this to you. She's not a, she's not a particularly highly sexed woman, you know? Really? Not as women go, no. Frankly, she's never really cared for it at all. Always making excuses not to, not to, or just lying there grinning and bearing it, if you know what I mean. Probably me, as I say. Well, uh, at least she's grinning, eh? <laughs> and she'd probably... It might possibly... Who can tell? All I know is that somewhere along the way, I feel I've let her down. Been less of the man she wanted, whom she expected when she married. Had every right to expect. Oh, she's such a terrific woman, Teddy. You've no idea. I absolutely adore her. Even after all these years. Yes, yes. She's not always the easiest person, I know. But I wouldn't swap the difficulty, Teddy. I wake up some mornings, you know. She's already gone. Got up. Up. Up, dressed, and gone out for one of her walks. And I think, what would happen if one day she didn't come back to me? And, you know, I can't face that at all. It's like a nightmare. It's just too terrible to contemplate. I mean, you know what I mean, don't you? Don't you feel like this sometimes with Trish? Yes, you know, as I say, we're in separate rooms. I have no idea what time she gets up. You know what I mean. Yes, I know what you mean. And it's not going to happen, Giles. Certainly it isn't. No? No, old boy. Knowing you, knowing Joanna, no way. Thank you, Teddy. Thank you for that. God, you'll make a wonderful MP. Thank you. Giles, good. I'm glad I've caught you on your own. Sorry? Oh, God. Talk to her, Giles. Talk to the woman. For God's sake. I'll get you another drink. Now, I'm not taking much more of this, Trish. I've had just about enough. Ugh. Trish, this is getting... Giles, uh, before you say another word, Joanna has something she needs to tell you urgently. She's in the garden. But I was just talking to... Quickly! It's terribly urgent. Quickly. Yes, of course. Good. That should clear the air. Are you listening, Trish? Right. I don't want any more of this nonsense. I've been talking to Giles there, and he is of the opinion, and I am in 
through some agreement with him that this is all in your mind. There's nothing medically wrong with you at all. Would you say that was a fair summary, Giles? Yes, he would. No, as far as I'm concerned, this is D-Day, Trish. D, but don't bugger me about anymore. Just come out with whatever's on your mind and give it to me straight. I've far too much at stake here for pussy talk. Now, I have called you a sheriff. We are all going to sit down and talk about it like rational, civilized human beings. And no one is leaving this room, I warn you, until we get to the bottom of. Oh, for God's sake! Where's everybody gone now? Oh, give me strength. May as well have this day. Teddy! Teddy! In heaven's name, was that? As he stands puzzled, the lights fade to blackout. Act one, scene two. 11 a.m. The same. Trish is in the dining room, now attempting the full table layout. Giles, rather irritatingly for her, follows her round like a small child. Trish sort of half listens, busying herself as they talk. I mean, you can imagine the shock. Yes, yes. You must understand, I had no inkling, Trish. None at all. No. At least you say you knew. Though how you could let it happen and say not a word to me, I can't imagine. Well, do you think it would have been helpful if I had? I think it was only proper. But the whole thing could have been over in two days, Giles, and then you would have been none the wiser. It could have been one of those affairs, you know, the sort that, if you don't know about them, you're better off not knowing. Has this happened to you before, Trish? Oh, God, yes. Masses of times. Is this her first, then, Joanna? Of course it is. As far as I know. Exactly. So Teddy has. Before. Oh, yes. I rather imagined he'd told you. Well, he made the occasional joke, but I thought they were only jokes. You know, best friends. Ex-best friends, you mean. Oh, really? What a shame. What? Well, you get on so well, don't you? I think you're probably the only real friend Teddy has. I mean, nobody likes him very much, except for that half-witted dog. Isn't there some way you could forgive and forget? After what's happened? Well, I thought that was all part of the man thing. You know... Sharing your whiskey, sharing your women. Guess who I had the other night, old boy. You don't like him anymore, do you, uh, Teddy? No, not very much. Not anymore. Oh, nothing to do with this, not at all. I mean, saving your presence. I'd hardly let my marriage break up because of a woman like Joanna. No, it's been a continuing thing over years, really, like it usually is. I know you... Uh, I know you've got separate... You know. Separate what? Bedrooms. Oh, rather. He told you that much then? Well, that all went very early on. I think the minute I was expecting Sally, Teddy lost complete interest. Well, so did I, to be perfectly honest. Whenever we made love, he always seemed in a terrible hurry to get somewhere. As if he had a train to catch. Maybe some women like it urgent. I like to feel like I'm on a world cruise. What kept you together then? Oh God, Giles, I don't know. What keeps any marriage together? Inertia, lack of viable alternatives, the children. I suppose sometimes if you're lucky, mutual support, deep friendship, and someone you can rely on when the going gets tough. I was quite prepared to give way to the sex bit, if he needed other women, so be it, provided they weren't close friends of mine and he didn't bring them home like a cat and leave them on the doormat, I didn't mind. But it was the other bit, really. That's when I stopped loving him, when I realised I could no longer trust him, no longer rely on him as a friend when things got difficult, you see? No chance of bridge building? It's not a river between us anymore, Giles. It's an ocean. Oh, 
dear, how sad. How very sad. Sometimes, you know, Trish, just sitting down and talking it out between you, it, it can really... Giles, thanks awfully for the advice. I'm really most touched. But don't you think you should be sorting out your own marriage? Oh, I am... I am so... so... No, don't take it the wrong way. No, no, you're, you're quite right. I have to... I, I've no... It's just that other people's problems always appear somehow simpler, don't they? They seem simpler anyway. Though in the case of Joanna, maybe. Oh, she's a rather unusual person. Yes? I, I still love her enormously, you know. Good. I can't help thinking that having done what she's... She's... She's done? I should... I should... I, I should look a bit to myself. I mean, the guilt's never just one one-sided, is it? Usually not. In my case it is, but usually not. Cast out the beam in thine own eye, eh? I won't disturb you anymore, Trish. Thank you for... Why don't you go home and talk to her, Giles? I'll try. It's not... She's a bit... Funny thing, guilt. Yes. See you both for lunch, then. Oh. You'd so welcome us here, would you? At your table? I certainly would. I've just worked out all these bloody place settings. Don't you dare let me down, either of you. Too late to invite anyone else now. I don't know what I'm going to say to Teddy, I'm sure. If you can't think of anything, do what I do. Ignore him. <laughs> it may come to that. I'll be off then. Start the peace process. <laughs> Giles? Hmm? I know it's shared responsibility and all that, but do remember, it was Joanna who had the affair, not you. Yes, of course. Oh, I have to talk to Jake as well, I suppose. I don't know how he's going to take it. Poor lad. He's so trusting. I'm laying out the nibbles in here then, Patricia. Right-o, is he? That French woman's driver's just telephoned. They said they're running half an hour behind on the motorway. Oh dear. I'll hold that lunch, shall I? If you can. I won't be responsible, mark you. You should never have ordered beef. No, you were quite right, is it? Oh, you'll rue the day. Has Paul vacuumed in here yet, is he? Probably not, knowing her. Well, it doesn't look as if she has. There's bits all over this floor. Oh, she should have done it before we laid the table. He needs boiling in oil and strangling that girl. Can you call her at once and tell her to do it now, before the guests start arriving? Leave the volivons on the chair. Right. Uh. Oh, there you are, Trish. Um, good. Right, it's uh, Trish, Trish, it is time for straight talk. Yes, all right, uh, carry on doing that if you have to. You don't even have to speak if you prefer, but I do want you to listen, because what I am about to say to you is vitally important, okay? Now, I have to take it on trust that you're listening, I suppose. But look, Trish, this cannot go on. This silence between us. It's a one-sided silence, that is. I'm not silent. Well, I'm not a silent one, am I? I'm happy to talk. I'll talk all day. No, it's you and this particular... I mean, if you'd only tell me what the problem was, then we could sort it out. But you're not giving me the chance, are you? That's the point I'm saying here. I mean, it, it, it can't be this Joanna business. <laughs> that was just a... I mean, I, we don't know what that was. Of course you do. It was just a bit of a mutual looky. That's all that was. Nothing on either side. Hmm. But as, as soon as I realized that it was affecting you, well, I ejected him. I told her, I said, you have to stop. I'm sorry. It's upsetting, Trish. I mean, the last thing I ever wanted to do was upset you. You're, you're number one, Trish. You're the first officer. 
Joanna, who's a uh, midshipman, AB2, whatever you call them. Now, the point is, today is crunch day. Trish. I can't say too much, not at present, because it's all very hush hush. But the reason that Gavin Remain is here today is to make me an offer. I can't be any more precise than that. But let's just say that in a few months we could be looking for a little Peter de terre in Westminster, okay? Enough said. Now it is vital that he impress this chap. Hmm. He's an old school friend, and he is on our side. Pull out all the stop, there's a good girl. Uh, uh, yeah, love all his jokes. I know you've heard them a million times. Tell him I'm sliced hobbits, you know, all that rubbish. <coughs> I didn't tell you I had uh, uh. Listen, Trish, um, our sleeping arrangements. I was um, having a little chat, I was having a think, and uh, I was wondering, maybe you should uh, try it on the same mattress a bit? Um, yeah. So that we can, uh, 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 I mean, it's, it's been a long time, or is it uh, uh, 17 years, hasn't it? So, um, we, we, uh, you, you may be feeling a bit um, rusty, but I am, uh, I am prepared to give it a whirl. Um, crack it open a bottle of bubbly. <laughs> Root out the frilly nightmare, you know, all that rubbish. What do you say? Fine by me. Oh, God. <coughs> Where's my bloody wife, Pearl? I don't know. Upstairs, I think. Hmm. Uh, how much of that were you listening to? How much of that did you uh, hear? All of it. Well, <laughs> get on with your work. You've no business eavesdropping at doors. That was a private conversation between my wife and, and myself. She's not here. Oh, well, that is entirely beside the point, Pearl. Whether she is here or not, has nothing at all to do with it. Now, get on with your work. Right. Oh, the most important day of my career. And she's not even prepared to live that. Go well, to hell with her. I'll manage on my own. Oh, shit. Shit. Oh, God. Oh, who put these full of points on? Yeah. Oh. God, is he? Is he? Did you put these ball of bombs on the chair? I was called away. Just what a stupid thing to do. Oh, have you got a damp claw? Not on me. Well, where? Well, in the kitchen. I didn't know you were going to sit on him, did I? Ruined now, these are. I have a very important meeting this morning. I hope you appreciate that. With a very, very important man. Well, I hope he doesn't like rare beef. So I want everything done properly, do you hear? It's a top secret meeting. I can't keep coming in and out, you know! Oh, you just behave yourself, busy. In a few months you could find yourself having to vote for me. Oh, God. If you'd like to wait in here, I'll see if I can find anyone. <laughs> Thank you, Sally. See you later. <laughs> ah, there he is. Oh, Gavin, old boy! There he is, there he is. Good to see you, Sparky. You haven't changed a scrap. <laughs> nor you, nor you. And you know, seeing Sally just now, it made me realise how long it's been. I mean, she was tiny. Six months, something like that, when I last saw her. How long ago was it? If you remember, I was very nearly her godfather. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, of course you were. Sorry, I um, got a little bit of a uh, ball of horn on my trousers. <laughs> Uh, yes, yes, uh, of course, of course you were, yes. I was trying to remember on the way here, uh, I only met Trish the once, I think. That was at the old school do. Oh, God, yes. Years ago, um, at the Savoy. Old boy's dance, fundraising. You got it. Mm. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Isn't this wonderful? What a pair, Teddy. What would this place be? 17, what? 1770? 1780? 1753. Oh, really? That early? Well, the original house was Tudor. Early Tudor. Uh, what on earth is she doing? Um, uh, but, but, but my, my great, 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 
whatever, uh, Edward Clapp. He's going to be burning the place. What's the ground? Oh, dear. Which apparently started as a row with his wife. Only got a bit out of hand. <laughs> Heavens. And uh, his wife... What is she doing? Um, uh, uh, his wife unfortunately died in the fire. Poor woman. A along with her uh, nine of their children. <laughs> And subsequently, he built the present house in their name. Nice gesture. Which, as you say, was a nice gesture. Uh, uh, he was actually subsequently killed in a hunting accident. Uh, and uh, he stayed then passed to his second son. Second surviving son, presumably. <laughs> Quite. Uh, the first son, Thomas Clare, he was put away because he was completely barking. Uh, and the second son, Edward, the, the, the second son, also called Edward. I'm sorry, Dad, this is just ridiculous, excuse me. Pearl, Pearl, what are you doing? Pearl! What? Switch it off! Switch it off! I was told to vacuum. Not now. Mrs. Platt told me to vacuum. Well, I am telling you not to. Go and vacuum somewhere else. Right. Morning, Gavin. Good morning. It's staying fine at the moment. Hopefully it stays this way for the fate this afternoon. Oh, haven't you got some chores to do? And the second son. Edward for that. They're all called Edward or Thomas, it's very confusing. <laughs> uh, he was apparently quite a bright chap uh, who finished the place off by building the West Wing, which we still call the New Wing, even though today it's actually the oldest part of the whole building. <laughs> and what part are we in now? Uh, this, uh, this is the old library, actually built in 1850. But although it's called the old library, it actually replaced the previous library, which was much much older. And although it's called the old library, it's never actually been used as a library. Uh, it was built by Thomas Platt for his new young bride as a wedding gift, but on their honeymoon cruise the poor girl fell overboard and as a result this room was never finished. In fact, he had it boarded up and consequently it wasn't used for 30 years and there has hardly been a book in here since. What a waste. In fact, it was eventually reopened again by my great-grandfather, Tom Platt. Oh, Tom Platt. Uh, his wife, Catherine, died of food poisoning, and he opened it up as a memorial to her. And that's her picture there. That's an uh, old Cat Platt, as she's generally known. <laughs> oh, yes. She's no oil painting, I'm afraid, but I think he's caught the dog rather well. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, and that is about it, really. Uh, we had the bomb, of course, the German, during the war. That took care of the East Wing. I don't know what they were trying to hit. Unfortunately, they did hit my grandmother, who'd taken up residence there after my grandfather, Ted Platt, had died, uh, which was very sad for everybody, of course, because she was a, a wonderful and rich character. Yes. On the whole, they've not had a lot of luck, have they? The women in your family. <laughs> no, perfectly true. Uh, what was it my father used to say? Um, marry a plat, and that's that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's wonderful to have such family history, dear. Must give you a great sense of permanence. Uh, yes, I suppose it does. <laughs> I do envy that. Uh, you don't go back, then? Well, yes, we do go back, but in assorted directions. Ah. Welsh. Really? Turkish. <laughs> Good Lord. I understand Portuguese Jewish. Beef! I never knew this about you, Sparky. And just a dash of Irish on my mother's side. Quite a mongrel. <laughs> Gets a bit crowded at Christmas, I imagine. Eh? No. Yeah. no. Well, I, I never knew that about you. All these years. Oh, I think at our particular school at that time, it was prudent to keep a fairly low profile about mixed parentage. Oh, yes. <laughs> All changed now, of course. Mm. Yes, girls as well now. <laughs> yes, they'd have been a bonus in our day, wouldn't they? <laughs> Still, 
we managed, didn't we? Yes. Oh. Oh God, it's good to see you again, Sparky. <laughs> Hello there. I'm so sorry I wasn't here to greet you. How do you do? I, um, I don't know if you'll remember me. I'm Patricia. Trish? Yes, of course. How could I forget? Gavin Ringmain, with a Y. Gavin, please. I was I'm just so hearing sorry. You. You've been left all on your own. That's terrible. I'll see if I can find my husband. He's around somewhere. Would you excuse me? I'll be one second, then we can have a sherry. I, uh... Right. Excuse me. But Pearl, what are you doing? I was just dusting. Well, don't dust the dining table, girl. We're just about to eat off of it. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Trish, she is legendary. Absolutely legendary. <laughs> is she? Absolutely. Well known. <laughs> I don't quite follow. Oh, Trisha's sense of humour. Well known throughout the county. <laughs> Indeed. It's, it's, um, it, it takes a bit of getting used to. <laughs> it's a bit of a, an acquired taste, but once you're on her wavelength. <laughs> yes. Great practical joker, too. Is she? Oh, thank your lucky stars you're not staying the night. Yes. Wake up with a hedgehog in your bed. <laughs> uh. Uh, anyway, uh, to business. Mm -hmm. uh, and Le Montpon is our French guest, we'll probably put it. Uh, incidentally, we actually have a French film actress coming to lunch, by the way. Um, she's coming to open our annual fete in the garden there. Yes, I saw some activity when I was... Um, I don't know what films she's been in. <sighs> Apparently, in her recent one, she gets blown up quite early on. Sounds like one of your family. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, yes, but everyone says she's very good indeed. Uh, I'm afraid I haven't seen it. Still, she should liven it up, eh? I hope she speaks English, though, because she's not going to get much out of us otherwise, is she? Uh, now. Yes. Well, you know why I'm here. I'm sure you do. Mm. We need you, Teddy. It's as simple as that. As you know, I'm fairly close to the PM, and we had a private dinner party the other night. Just three or four of us. Chris Baxendale. Uh, yes. Simon Wickstead. Uh, Charlie Havers. Yes, yes. Rowena Todd Martin. <laughs> no, no, I don't know her. Rowena? Well, in that rarefied circle, let's just say she's big. She's very, very big. And she's going to get bigger. Really? There are plans for her, believe me. Anyway, what we have with this constituency, Teddy, is a seat that's rapidly slipping from under us. At the next election, it could well turn. I'm sure you're aware of that. I mean, Thika's not the right stuff. He really isn't. Nice enough man. Oh, yes, a very, very nice man. But he's not cutting it, and we can't afford to pay his keep. Cruel facts, but these days politics is a cutthroat business, Teddy. And we're turning to you, cap in hand, third generation of Platts. Your family made this seat practically a family business. You could have easily taken over after your father, but you chose, perhaps wisely at the time, not to. Well, there was the business, of course. Of course, there was the business. We all appreciated that. But as I understand it, these days you're involved slightly less. Uh, slightly less, yes. So we're appealing to you. I'm, of course, just the intermediary, but I do speak for the PM. He wants you to know, and I quote his exact words on this, he wants you to know he would be forever in your debt. I see. I see. Mm. Forever in your debt. Yes? Need I say more? He'd like me to stand. He would. At the next election? Yes. Hmm. Well, they'd, uh, they'd have to pick me first. Select me, whatever they do, wouldn't they? That's all taken care of. Don't worry. Oh, really? Um, what about Colin Fika? Where does he stand? He doesn't. Let's say he's uh, seen the axe and bowed his head to the inevitable. Oh, he is such a nice man. Charming man. Charming. Huh. Too nice for politics. Well? The thing is, I want to say yes to you, Sparkin. I, I hear what you're saying and I, I, I can see where you're coming from and I, I want more than anything to say yes. The question, you see, that I keep asking myself is, do I need it? Hmm. Teddy, let me put it this way. 
You can do perfectly well without this government. But ask yourself this. Can this government do without you? Hmm. Yes, I see. Uh, put like that. I think the PM's gratitude is not to be dismissed lightly. There are one or two little perks that could quite easily come your way. Uh, you mean ministerial office? Yes, eventually, and that as well. But I think he's pretty happy with the team at present. I mean, there might be some temporary, very, very minor post, arts minister, <laughs> something like that. But no, there are a lot of select committees and commissions, Teddy. POIs, as we like to call them. POIs? Putting off the inevitables. Quite high profile, some of them. For instance, he gave me permission to mention the forthcoming inquiry into the moral conduct of members, which is quite a hot potato, you can imagine. They're looking for someone to chair that. Someone who's absolutely squeaky clean. That's vital, as you appreciate. Oh, uh, absolutely. <laughs> the trouble is finding anyone who'll stand up to that sort of scrutiny. The sort of scrutiny those bastards are going to put them under. The committee? No, the press. I mean, whoever serves on that committee better wear their rubber pants. Because they'll be swarming all over them. <laughs> I see. But then, which one of us is blameless? Mortality they'll deadly bane, thy tens or thousands they'll hast slain. Very, very true. Oh, Rabbi Burns. And especially in his days. <laughs> anyway, what do you say, matey? Well, I think I'm bound to say yes, aren't I? Then it's yes. It looks like it. I can tell the PM you've accepted. Yes, you can. You'll be overjoyed. I'll phone him after lunch. I have his private number. Uh, where is he? The checkers? Eastbourne. <laughs> What's he doing there? A dirty weekend? <laughs> Conference. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, of course. <laughs> Sorry. Um, listen, can I offer you a sherry while we're waiting for the others? Uh, whiskey, perhaps? Sherry, thank you. That would be very nice. <laughs> Now, incidentally, talking of morals, I was upset to read all that rubbish about you a year or so back. Oh, that. No. We soon settled that, don't worry. Cost them a packet, too. Oh, good for you. Underage or something of the sort, wasn't she? Yes, she was underage. She was 15 and a half. <laughs> I found the girl on my doorstep just rooting Christian literature. She was absolutely soaked. She got caught in the rain. I invited her inside and gave her some dry clothes. End of story. Someone gets hold of it, blows it up out of all proportion. <laughs> oh. Oh. Cheers. <laughs> bastards, aren't they? Absolute bastards. I don't know why they publish that sort of filth. I mean, who the hell is interested? Oh, God knows. Yeah. Just be warned, Teddy. If you're coming into this line, keep your shirt tucked in. Here's to you. Oh, cheers, Sparky. Incidentally, I'm not known all that often as Sparky. Not these days. No, oh, fair enough. <laughs> but then I don't suppose many people call you Penelope, do they? <laughs> oh, no, no. Thank God. <laughs> Incidentally, we must keep all this quiet for a day or two. At least all the right people have been notified. It was such as Colin Thega. Yes, Colin Thega, obviously. I think the Prime Minister will probably want a personal word with him. <laughs> Poor chap. Yes. No, I'm sorry, Gavin, I can't find Teddy anywhere. Don't know where he's gone. <laughs> well, uh, I, eventually, I expect. Oh, you've helped yourself to Sherry. Jolly sensible. I think I'll join you. Now, we've just heard that their car's turned into the village, so Madame Cadour plus her driver should be with us any minute. Lucille Cadour. I don't know if you've heard of her. She's a French film star. Uh, yes, I've just told him, Prue. Have you heard of her at all? I hadn't, but... Uh... I've told him already. She's, She's going to open our fate this afternoon. Really? I've told him this already, Trish. Now, who else have we got coming? Oh, two very, very special friends of ours, Giles and Joanna Mace. Well, they're our closest neighbours, actually. They live at the bottom of our garden. Giles is our local Giles doctor. is the village doctor. Yes. And Joanna's a teacher. Joanna teaches. Locally. What? What? Locally. Does she teach locally? Oh, yes. Yes, up at our daughter Sally's school. Up at our daughter Sally's school, only she teaches the juniors. The juniors? Yes. 
<laughs> Do you... Sorry? Sorry? Oh. Nothing. Huh. Ah, here they are! <laughs> Talk of the devil. Come in, come in. May we come in? Yes, do. Come and meet Gavin. Gavin, this is Jo, Joanna Mace, and this is Giles. How do you do? Gavin Ringmain, with a Y. <laughs> with a what? With a Y. Why what? That's how it's spelled, with a Y. Oh, I see, with a Y. Hello, Giles Mace, how do you do? Uh, would you both care for a sherry? Did you drive down this morning? Yes, I did, I, I started quite early. A sherry, both of you? How long did that take you? I think almost exactly three hours. Do either of you want a bloody sherry, yes or no? It's terribly good going. You must have been traveling. I think I was just a wee bit the far side of the speed limit. Oh. Now, would you both like a glass of sherry? Oh, lovely. Thank you. Well, you know, the fastest that I ever did. Who drive? A little Porsche. Oh, golly. Just a small one. You know, the fastest that I ever did it from last. Joe. Oh, thank you. The fastest. Else? Thank you so much. <laughs> the fastest time that I ever did it. Looking forward to meeting our film star. Oh, yes, yeah, exciting, isn't it? <laughs> it was two hours. That reminds me, I must keep an eye out for them. We don't want them driving around the back like you did, Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> two hours and 15 minutes. Gavin has removed all the signposts for some reason. A door to fucking door. Why did you do that? Don't ask me, he's a law unto himself. What about that then, you stupid bastards? I am sorry, Gavin. Oh, Sally, you haven't seen your father at all, have you? Uh, no, Mum, they're here. They've oh. arrived. Oh. Pearl's just seen their car. Oh, heavens, uh, why don't we all go and meet her? Wouldn't that be fun? We can all cheer. She'll think she's a can. Oh, you're coming? Oh, yes, let's why go. Why not? <laughs> she's somewhere around the front. <laughs> What are you doing, Pearl? I dropped one of those fish pasties. Well, then pick it up. I'm going to. Oh. Oh. Oh, uh, 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 sorry. Uh, uh, pardon. Uh, no. Uh, we have come uh, uh, wrong. Uh, Ah, ah, um, uh, to a, uh, uh, vous, vous a, uh, Madame Cadeau? Ah, oh, I, I am Lucille. <laughs> you uh, are, um, um, Mr. Plate? Uh, Platt. Teddy. Oh. I'm Teddy. I am named Teddy. Oh, so, Teddy. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, this? Uh, my, f my driver, uh, Fran. Fran. Um, ah, uh, welcome also here. I am welcoming you. It's all right, I speak English. Oh, splendid. Uh, please do come in. Um, entree. Uh, I'm afraid you'll find here very few of us uh, speaking the French. Um, je regrette. Um, wrong, the Francais. Oh, no, ce n'est pas grave. J'ai l'habitude, quand on travaille souvent en Angleterre ou en Amérique, on s'aperçoit que très peu de gens parlent français. Bien sûr, je devrais apprendre l'anglais. Bah, mais j'ai si peu de temps et je suis aussi très paresseuse. Uh, yes, uh, jolly good. We find that too, especially during the summer. <laughs> Oh, you're here. Hello. Uh, everybody, uh, this is Lucille. I'm afraid she doesn't speak much English. It'll have to be, you know. <laughs> uh, hello. <clears throat> I come in the wrong door. I speak not good English, so uh, I'm afraid. Alors, nous allons parler français. We'll all have to speak French, won't we? Oh, oui. Bienvenue, Madame Coudeur. C'est gentil de votre part de nous consacrer un peu de votre prix ici. 
Oh, mais tous les plaisirs est pour moi. C'est tellement plus agréable d'être dans la campagne anglaise plutôt qu'enfermé dans des chambres d'hôtel. Ah, c'est si beau! C'est... Oh. They all crowd together and chatter happily in a babble of French. Teddy finds himself on the edge of the group, isolated and alone. <laughs> The chatter continues as the lights fade to blackout.
House by Alan Akebourne. Act two, scene one. Saturday, August 14th, 2 p.m., the same. Lunch is just about over. In the sitting room are Trish, Sally, and Gavin finishing their coffee. Sally also has a glass of red wine. In the dining room, through the half-open door, the sound and the occasional glimpse of Teddy and Lucille, who've obviously hit it off despite the language difficulty. The two alternate between a low murmur and sudden bellows of laughter. Teddy has clearly had several drinks over lunch. Joanna and Giles have left. What a simply delicious lunch. Thank you so much. Yes. Izzy usually gets her beef rather rarer than that. I'm so sorry. Teddy! <laughs> Actually, I, I prefer it on the well done side. Um, it was Trevor's on Wellington's. <laughs> I mean, it was very silly of me to cho choose sirloin, but I thought it would be rather nice for our French guests. You know, roast beef of old England. Roast boat of old England, you mean? <laughs> I'm sure Lucille appreciated it. Are your trousers quite dry now? Yes, absolutely fine. Nothing serious. She's such a clumsy girl. When she's not breaking crockery, she's pouring water over people. <laughs> I must ask her to do buttons up in future as well. Well, I'd certainly no objection to that. <laughs> no, but uh, all the same, it's... Uh, I'm sure it's unhygienic. I mean, Giles practically had his nose wedged in there at one point. Incidentally, I, I must apologise for our friends rushing off in the middle of the meal like that. Joanna had this important overseas phone call, apparently, and Giles had to... had to... Had to go and hold the receiver for her. <laughs> Still, more wine for us, eh? Well, help to wash down the beef, anyway. Fillet of beef, Wellington. Yes, don't keep on, darling. How many glasses of that have you had? Two. This is my second, that's all. Well, you've certainly... <laughs> Excuse me. Gavin, two glasses of wine and I'm some sort of alcoholic. You've had more than two. How do you know? Because I've been counting. You've been sitting there counting the number of glasses I've had. Gavin, wouldn't you consider that slightly overprotective? I mean, wouldn't you? Well... Anyway, <laughs> red wine's good for you. There's been fresh research recently... I don't care! It's still not good for you to drink too much. I don't blame you. <laughs> it's a stunning claret. Absolutely clock-stopping. I don't care! She shouldn't drink too much of it. Apart from anything else, by the time you're 40, you'll be a red-faced, boring drunk. Yes, Pearl? 
I've done the dishes, I'll be off now. Yeah, it's all right, girl. Got to get ready for my fortune telling down in my little tent. Your trousers are all right now, are they, Gavin? Yes, thank you. Sorry about that. Hope nothing's wrong. And you put everything away, have you, Pearl? <clears throat> yes. No more breakages, I hope. Oh no, <laughs> not to use notice. Excuse me, I better go and see what damage she's done. Uh, Lucille, je voulais seulement vous rappeler que c'est presque de la cérémonie de votre. Ah, what? Merci. I've been introducing Lucille to the joys of single malt whiskey. <laughs> Uh, you're, you're a, what do you call it, uh, you're a wine buff then, are you? Lord, no. I have a working knowledge of one or two favourites. I can tell a good one from El Plonco. Is this a good one? Very good. Can't you tell? Wine's wine to me. I don't believe that for a moment. What is it then? Tell me about it. It's a claret, is it? Yes, it's a Bordeaux. <laughs> is that good? Not of itself. That's just the generic name. It's a St. Julian from the hist uh, district of Haute Medoc, which is one of the most famous of the French wine growing regions, which include Margot, Poyac, St. Julian. What you're drinking there is a Chateau Léoville Barton, which is certainly one of the best. It's a, it's a second growth, what they term a douzième cru, which is pretty high up on the league table. There are some who think it ought to be ranked higher. But what makes that particularly special is that it's a 71. And you can't do much better than that. 1971? Before I was born. Long before. How old would you have been in 1971? Hmm. Considerably older than I am now. <laughs> You're not going to tell me? No. I told you my age. That's different. It's very good to be your age. I don't think it is. No. When you're my age, you still tend to get treated like a child. Only by your parents, surely. And they can't help that, can they, poor things? You don't look on me as a child, then? No, I don't look on you as a child. Not at all. Oh, want a sip? No, thank you. I'm afraid I can't take it these days. Not at my age. Oh, I don't believe that for a moment. Hmm. Oh, no. Hi. Hello. What do you want? I was just wondering if um, Madame, uh, Miss. <laughs> She's finishing her lunch. <laughs> oh, you haven't seen my dad, have you? I'm looking for him. Not since he chased after your mother. <laughs> uh, Gavin, this is Jake. Hi. Hello, Jake. Gavin Ringmain, with a Y. How do you do? Hello. <laughs> is that your car? The Porsche? You got it. The yellow one. That's the one. Cool. Um, what were we talking about? Wine, weren't we? So, how can you tell if they're any good? Well, there are several ways. First, you look at the colour. Look, hold up the glass to the light, and then tip it ever so slightly. That's it. What am I looking for? Well, you'll see that's a reddish brown, which is a good colour for a fine wine. That means it's fully mature. Wine can vary from purplish, which indicates very young wine, to a sort of cherry red in a much lighter wine. Check it isn't cloudy, which that certainly isn't. It's good and dark, but not cloudy. That's important. Now, next, you use your nose. Hold the glass still. Sniff the wine. Deeply. That's it. Now, swill it gently in your glass. Good. Now inhale again. Can you pick up all those varied flavours? Almost meaty, isn't it? What we call gamey. Yes, yes. Um, musky. Animal. Mm -hmm. Should we ever get around to drinking it then? Whoa, whoa. Not so fast. Don't be so impatient. Make it last. Now, the ultimate test. You need to taste it. Take a tiny sip, very, very little, and hold it in your mouth. Right? Now suck in a little air so that it circulates around the entire buccal cavity. Good. You should feel even more aromas at the back of your nose now. As the wine warms up, close your eyes. Just enjoy the sensation on your tongue.
let it invade all the passages. Yes? Now, savour it. Enjoy it. Allow it to linger. Yes. Yes. Now, if you must, you can swallow. Wow. <laughs> well, I'll, d I'll be out here when she's ready. <clears throat> Friend of yours? Well, vaguely. Boyfriend? Oh, God, no. Well, I think he'd like to think he is, but he isn't. Not at all. You don't have boyfriends? Sometimes. But not just at present. I'm too busy with other things. Such as? Well, without wanting to sound selfish. My own future, really. Oh. Anything particular in mind? I don't know yet. Might possibly go into politics. Quite keen to do that at present. Politics? Uh, do beware. That's one possibility. National politics, of course, not local. Not interested in dogs or one-way traffic schemes. But then I write, so I might do that. You write. How fascinating. Novels? Poetry, mainly. I find that more satisfying. I've written quite a lot, actually. Some of it's pretty good. And I'm sure it is. Who's your publisher? Oh, I haven't got to publish yet. Uh, you need to have enough for a full anthology before you publish. Oh, how very sensible. I remember Ted Hughes saying to me very much the same thing. Then I design a bit as well, so there's always that, of course. Good gracious. Hard to choose at the moment. Spoiled for choice. Just a bit. And then I want to read a lot more. Learn about things. All sorts of things that my limited curriculum-led education hasn't prepared me for. Wine. Life. Life outside this place. I want to travel. I want to go abroad. I want to see things and meet lots of people. So I'm not really interested in starting relationships with men whose lives seem to start and end here. Does that, does that sound callous? No. It sounds perfectly normal. Have you travelled a bit? Mm, yes, yeah, quite a bit. To research your books, was it? Sometimes. I'm afraid I haven't read any of them. Sorry. Oh, well, never mind. Fortunately, a lot of people have. I'm afraid I'm not really into reading thrillers. Good, because I'm not into writing thrillers either. Oh, I thought they were thrillers. I regard them simply as novels, but mm. I agree. I think that's how I've been categorised. It's an appalling habit these days, isn't it? Mm. Wanting to put everything into neat pigeon hills. Mm. What I call internet culture. Everything has to be cross-referenced for easy access. Instantly downloadable knowledge. The Thriller Writer's website. The Best 100 Comic Writer's website. Britain's Tallest Female Dramatist's website. Huh. The most distinguished, totally bold composers. Uh, right. Hello. Back again. Hello. Hello there. You all finished your lunch, have you? I think Lucille's still in the dining room. Nearly time for the opening, isn't it? It certainly is. Well, come on, we're going to be dreadfully late. Well, I'd better fetch you then, hadn't I, in here, you say? You might just miss the rain. It's going to back it down in a minute. Dong, 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 you know. Dark, dark, dark. Oh, oh, oh. Boyons, Lucille, the moment is venue du vrai la fête et la partie de ici. Oh, vous, quelle rage je m'amuse. Vous êtes toujours là pour vous cacher. Mon Dieu, vous n'avez pas bu, dites-moi. Has she been drinking? Well, she's been initiated into the joys of single malt whiskey. Vous savez bien que vous ne devriez pas boire. Vous m'avez promis de ne pas boire. She had the odd glass of wine at lunch. Qu'est-ce que vous racontez, un petit verre, pauvre pétasse? Qu'est-ce que ça va changer? Si j'ai envie de boire, je boirai. Si je vous écoutais, je ne m'amuserai jamais. Je restais dans mon coin, mouette, comme un bon soeur. Why would you let her drink, for God's sake? What do you mean, let her drink? She shouldn't be drinking. Why not? Because 
Yeah. Because she has a problem with it. You should never let her near a bloody drink. And we didn't know that. Well, she's like Jekyll and Hyde. After three drinks, she's a liability. Lucille and I, we've worked out a perfect way of communication. We have entirely solved the en grand coulibar, n'est-ce pas? New York, New York, New York, wobble, wobble, old bean. You see? Perfect understanding. Well, if you told us, we would have never offered her a drink in the first place. Yeah. Sally, let this be a lesson to you. Fran, why didn't you warn us? Because I was sent off to the pub for lunch on my own, wasn't I? You see what I mean? She understands me perfectly. <laughs> yes, but I thought that's what you'd prefer to do. As her chauffeur, that's what the chauffeurs usually prefer to do. I'm not her chauffeur, I work in her agent's office. Oh, I see. I do beg your pardon. You should have said, I assumed you were the chauffeur. She's been getting a bit uppity about the inferior French market produce. I was forced to remind her of Agincourt. Uh, Agincourt? <laughs> Agincourt? We Agincourt! Not everyone who drives a car is a chauffeur, you know? Henri Le Sang, Waterloo. Uh, no, I I'm sorry. I. Napoleon. No, everyone who opens doors is a doorman. Wellington. Oh, no, there's been some dreadful confusion. I've said I'm terribly sorry. Napoleon. Did you have a pleasant lunch anyway? Napoleon. Yeah, I did. Thank you. Very nice uh, roast beef. Wellington. Lucky you. Napoleon. Oh dear, this is terrible. She doesn't even look as if she can stand up. She's fine. She's fine. <laughs> Good afternoon, Sally. Good afternoon, Patricia. <laughs> I will. Oh, she's a little girl. This is horrible, Bunny Bono. Sylvie, qu'on a raconté tout à l'heure. I don't think she's up to it. I think you'd better find somebody else. <laughs> L'idiot de Villa. <laughs> oh. I declare. This fight, open! Oh. <laughs> ne me regardez pas comme ça! Je peux marcher! Je peux marcher! Très bien! Toute seule! Oh, merci! Pour qu'est-ce que est vous avez fait ça? Regardez de qui vous avez là, vous pouvez appeler tenir debout! Euh, je tiens très bien debout! Ne vous inquiétez pas! Vous roulerez sous la table avant moi! Ça, je ne suis sure. Is there a problem? No, no, no problem, Barry. She's just a. Uh... Oh, my down. I'm sure she'll be fine once she's out in the fresh air. All she has to do is open the thing. She doesn't have to hang around. Teddy, Teddy, uh, uh, voir les jardins. Uh, Teddy, can you see her out? She wants you to see her out. Oh. Most certainly. <clears throat> you deserve? Yeah, Teddy, more to be Teddy. York, York, York. <laughs> I'm going to miss the rain, Barry. We might. We might be lucky, Patricia, if we hurry. Hello, Moto. Come on, Sally. We need you down there, too. Uh, I think I might come down a bit later. No, come now. I don't happen to... Sally, please do as I ask, please. God's sake. Gavin, see what I mean. Well, well, well now where are you going? To get a coat, of course. Oh dear, it's so easy to offend them at that age. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, no, that's the point, she's back on it. Yes. Well, quite a bit, by the looks of it. Well, I wasn't invited to lunch, was I? Otherwise, I... Yeah, well, she's just going to open it. Yeah. No, that's all right. I don't think there are... No, not even a photographer. I don't think they have newspapers in this part of the world. Yeah, I will, as soon as I've delivered her. Yeah, yeah, okay. Shit. Trish, where'd they all go? Down on the lower meadow there. Down the steps. Where are you delivering her? Hollyhurst? Who told you that? Just two and two put together, really. Well, do me a favour and don't make that four, all right? We don't want it public. There's no press here today, is there? I didn't see any. Just our local paper. 
I think Jake is trying to get a word with her if he... Shit! What on earth is Hollyhurst? It's a very smart, very expensive, very exclusive clinic used by the rich and famous to help quell their foolish habits. Oh, it's a clinic. I've never heard of it, I'm afraid. Hmm, just as it should be. Well, you have children these days, you hold your breath and pray. Do you have children? No. You're married, though? No. Oh, I somehow thought you were. Don't know where I got that idea. You were married, though, weren't you? No. Oh. Well, now we know all about you, don't we? <laughs> and I'm not gay, either, before you ask. No! Uh, no, I didn't. Gosh, no. Uh, I never thought you were. Heavens, no. Uh, not that I, I mean fine. If you were. But, uh, super. I was, mind you. Gay? Yes. At one stage of my life. But I gave it up. Really? Why was that? I don't know. I think it all just got rather tedious. Ah. There was an awful lot of hard work to it, you see. Yes, I can imagine. Emotional hard work. Yes, yes. Men tend to take it out on each other, rather. Yes, I can see they might, yes. Mm -hmm. So I uh, change shirts, as they say. Yes, that's very interesting. And are you happier now? Oh, yes. Good, good. <laughs> that's the main thing, isn't it? I don't know why she's taking so long to get a coat, for heaven's sake. <laughs> Perhaps she's changing her shirt. Mm. She's 17. That's all I'm saying. Just 17. Why don't I trust you for some reason? I ought to be able to trust you, I'm sure. But it's rather like finding a fox in one's chicken run. I think you must have gathered that Things between Teddy and I have reached a rather peculiar state just at present. Yes, I had noticed. It's very hard, you see, for someone like me. I'm originally from a Navy background, I don't know if you knew. I did read that somewhere. My father was actually a pretty high ranking. He was a rear admiral, actually. Yes, I did know that. And my mother was really of the old school. Fiercely loyal. I mean, fiercely loyal. It was my father, first and foremost, all the time. Absolutely, without question. And we were all girls, four of us. He desperately wanted a boy, poor old man, but he never got one. And the four of us were unquestionably background. You put your man first. Have a career, by all means, if you absolutely have to. But when the chips were down, the man came first. But you did have a career. Oh. Yes, I messed around designing bits and pieces. Come on, it was very successful design practice. Yes, it, it was. In which you were offered a partnership, weren't you? Yes, but they were desperately short of people. They were taking on anyone at that time. A partnership, before you were 30? I don't know much about these things, but I'd have thought that was fairly impressive. Well, it wasn't bad, but... You know an awful lot about me. How do you know all this? Oh, I'm, I'm always listening out. I hear things. Anyway, I got the job to do up this place. Of course, I met Teddy. His father was still alive then. And one thing led to another. And then you gave it all up? Well, I was expecting Sally and we're a long way from London. You get out of swing, you know? Lately, things have been a bit tricky. Oh, you mustn't think they're always like this. No. Actually, they're usually worse. <laughs> oh, God, I, I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't say that. You see, I, I saw my mother standing by this man, by my father, making sure we all stood by him. And it was only about 10 years after he died that I realized, bloody Rear Admiral or not, he wasn't worth tuppence. Not compared to my mother. He was a humorless, insensitive, self-righteous, self-opinionated, callous bully. And when he died, shortly afterwards, she died. 
because he'd allowed her no reason of her own to carry on living. That's what it amounted to. Everybody said she died of grief, which was absolute bollocks. She died because he gave her no reason of her own to live. All the same, it's very hard to break out of that tradition, you see. My sisters all find it the same with their marriages. Well, Joan isn't married, but she may as well be. She shut up with this fearful creature. But we're all at heart, rear admirals, right wives. It's very hard to break out of that. The way I do it is to blot things out completely. I've started editing my life. Like a stencil, you know? You hold it over the paper and you just allow the bit you want to bleed through. It works reasonably well. Most people have come to the conclusion that I'm completely batty, but seeing as I'm obviously harmless, they're happy to humour me. It can't go on though, can it? No, it, it can't. Of course it can't. I take it a reproachment is not on the cards? Oh, golly, no. Long past that, I'm afraid. I think I should get out, really, shouldn't I? But I don't know. Where would I go? What would I do? Nice, comfy life here in many ways. Plenty of money, daughter doing her A-levels. All sorts of things to consider. And then I think, no. In any case, that's not fitting conduct for a rear admiral's daughter. In my family, the women go down with the ship. Be careful. I was hearing earlier about the women in the Platt family. Uh, yes, dreadful, isn't it? Do you think we're all cursed? I sometimes sit here in the evening and there's old Cat Platt saying, you're next. I suppose telling you all this isn't doing Teddy's chances a lot of good. I mean, I don't really know why you're here, but it's obviously something very important. I, I don't want to be told, don't worry. It's just, whatever there is between us, I, I wouldn't want to ruin his chances, despite everything he's done. Well, spaces aren't supposed to be part of the equation these days. Still, they are, of course, very often. But we're not supposed to notice anymore if the Foreign Secretary's partner is chewing up the family rug. <laughs> Hello? What's the matter? What? Why are you staring? You went to get a coat. It changed completely. I thought I'd dress up for this fate. That's all. What's wrong? I don't know why you've got all that lot on to sell tombola tickets in the drizzle, that's all. All right, I'll go and change again. No, no. Oh, I think I look ridiculous. I didn't say you looked ridiculous. For heaven's sake, Sally, what's got into you? All I said was, you look a bit overdressed for a garden fate, that's all. So, do, do you want me to change? No, I don't want you to change. I don't care if you come dressed as a scuba diver. I'm going on down there. Are you coming? Uh, yes. You are coming. Promise me? Yes. We'll be down. Promise. Right. That doesn't sound so good. What were you both talking about just then? Me, I bet. No. Bet you were. Actually, we were talking about your mother, chiefly. Oh, I see. I go upstairs for five minutes and <laughs> you start chatting her up as well. Is that what I've been doing? Chatting you up? Yes, weren't you? Well, that was short and sweet. It's absolutely bucketing it down. Uh, come in, everyone. Come along in. I think the children had better stay out here, Patricia. Under the awning. Oh, they're all drenched. They'd wreck your lovely room. Okay, just as you like. I'll organise some tea and juice and things. Izzy, could you mastermind that? Hello, Sally. Hello. Hi, Jake. Where is she? Where has she got to? Who's that? Pearl. The Jezebel's still out there with him. I warned him. I warned him. Izzy, uh, you'll get soaked. Oh, what's that? happening? Oh, Pearl, well, there you are. What are you doing? I'm just fetching my camera. Not much use now, is it? 
Izzy just went looking for you. She looked rather agitated. Oh my God. He better be all right. If she lays a finger on him, I will murder her. Lord. A crisis. Heaven knows. There's always a crisis with those three. Can I be of any help at all, Patricia, if you make it see? Thank you, Lindy. Since the entire domestic staff seem to be having some sort of drama in the rain, that would be much appreciated. I'm always happy to do something. Are you okay? Yeah, just one of those days, you know, you get them, don't you? But you just can't seem to do anything right. Oh dear. Yes, I get those frequently. Come and tell me about it. Um, Trish, any idea where your husband and Lucille went? None at all, I'm afraid. Haven't seen him all day. Bloody film stars. I think there'll be a rainbow in a minute, children. Uh, do you mind if I close these doors? It's a bit drafty. Uh, so you deny you were chatting me up, do you? I didn't deny it. So, what are you going to do about it? What do you suggest I do? I don't know. Go upstairs, I suppose. Risky. Your mother only downstairs. What would she think? She wouldn't care. Don't you believe it? We could go out somewhere for a drive in your lovely smart car. You'd like that? Love it. I love fast cars. And perhaps we could stop somewhere? For dinner. At some smart hotel. Five star. We could sniff some more wine together. Just a little. And then, who knows? We could go upstairs to our huge double room. Or post a bed. At least. And then read it. Undress each other. If, if you like. And we'd indulge in sheer shameless hedonistic pleasure. Sheer shameless hedonistic pleasure. <laughs> I like that. Uh, 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 and what would that be for you? What's your idea of shameless hedonistic pleasure? What would I have to do to please you? Me? Oh, I have very simple tastes. What? Tell me, come on. You're not going to shock me, you know. Go on. You're not, you know. <laughs> All right. Well, we'd go into the bathroom where I'd run you a deep, piping hot bath. Scented with an exotic bath essence, courtesy of Crabtree and Evelyn. Sounds nice. And you'd lie in that bath until you were pink and glowing all over. Then you'd get out and I'd ever so gently pat you dry with a big, soft, pure white towel. With me so far? Sure. And then you get dressed again. I would. Only this time in your school uniform. The one you were wearing today when I first saw you. A school uniform. And then you'd get under the shower and turn it to the coldest setting until you were soaked to the skin and shivering. What? And then I'd hand you the Gideon Bible and you'd go outside, still wet through, into the hall, closing the door behind you. You'd count to ten and then ring the bell. And when I opened it, you'd say, Good evening, sir. I bring good news of mankind's salvation. Are you by any chance a sinner? And I'd say, yes, my dear, I fear that I am, but I'm certain I can be saved. Please come inside and allow me to offer you dry clothes, for I see you are drenched through. And I'd lead you into the bedroom, remove your nasty, wet uniform, put you over my knee and spank you soundly with your own Bible for being a bumptious, flirtatious, precocious, conceited, smug little prick teaser. I, um, I, uh... Sally? Whoops! What's going on? Why does she rush off like that? I have no idea. At that age, you know. Overexcitement, perhaps. Jake, what's got into everyone suddenly? Oh, may I? These look delicious. They're meant for the children. <laughs> Sally! Sally! Would you open the door, please, dear? What's that? I brought the tea and the orange juice for you all. Too late now. Oh. 
<clears throat> Thank you. That's for the children. Hmm, <laughs> delicious. Excuse me. Oh, Jake. I'd, I'd like a, I'd like a word, please. It is Jake, isn't it? They used to have a dog called Jake, you know. What did you say to Sally just now? What did oh, you say yeah. to her? It was a cocker spaniel. I had to have him put down. Broke my heart. Just now, when you were in here together, I was watching through the, through the window. She was extremely upset. She just ran out the front door. Oh dear, has she? Well, I've no idea what kind of upset her. You know bloody well. <laughs> I want to know what, know what, know what upset Sally. Perhaps you should ask her, old boy. I just tried. She was so up. So, she was so upset. She wouldn't even speak to me. I'm afraid that's your problem. Oh no. If she won't even speak to you. This is our problem. Yours and yours and mine. Oh come now. Stop behaving like a schoolboy. Out of my way. Not till we've talked about it. I want to know what happened. Out of my way, please. Come along now. Don't let it get silly. Now you're starting to annoy me. Good. Get out of my way, please. <laughs> now I did ask you nicely. I wouldn't get up again. Next time I will really hurt you, old boy. Well, I don't know what's get, got into her. She's nowhere in the house. She's not in her room. Jake, what on earth are you doing now? Oh, um, I uh, felt... Yeah, uh, are you all right? Um, yeah, yeah, I, uh, I'll, um... Sit down for a minute. No, I, I really... Please, uh, just for a minute. <sighs> what really <happened? laughs> He, he upset Sally. Gavin? Yes, I saw he had. I, I tackled him about it, that's all. Oh, that was very brave of you, Jake, but actually extremely foolhardy. People like Gavin are quite dangerous. I was trying to think about it, what it was, earlier. I couldn't put my finger on it at first. What it is about him, of course, is that he's completely devoid of real feeling. No genuine emotion, not even sexual. He's not a fox. I was wrong. He's more a lizard. So nothing really can reach him, which is what makes him dangerous, because people like that can so easily manipulate the rest of us, who do feel, who do care. You see... What was he doing with Sally, then, if he wasn't...? He was playing a nasty little game, that's all. Nothing to worry about. Hopefully all that's been hurt is her pride. You'll need to be specially nice to her for a few days, that's all. If I can get close enough. Don't worry. She seems to want to push me away half the time, just ignores me. And then other times she... That's all part of it, isn't it? This ridiculous dance we all do. If we're not born Gavin Ringmains, that is. You know, the other evening, I was out there in the garden, watching the village children. With Joanna. With your mother rehearsing their maypole dance. There they were, all clinging on to their ribbons as if their lives depended on it. Well, judging by her tone of voice, they probably did. And I thought, that's how it is for all of us, really. When we're young, we're each given a ribbon. We're desperate for a ribbon, any ribbon to cling on to. And once we have our ribbon, we're taught the dance. And from then on, for the rest of our lives, we obediently move round and round our maypole observing respective little set patterns, weaving in and out, keeping our distances, careful not to tread on anyone's toes, clinging on to our ribbon, terrified of deviating in case we get hurt or lost or rejected. But the older we get, despite all our efforts, the more we get entangled with other people. And never for a minute do most of us ever dream of doing the obvious and just letting go. We're terrified. Oh, the hardest thing, believe me, Jake, is sometimes just not take hold of the ribbon. To never join the bloody dance in the first place. But to actually stand still and say to someone, I love you. And mean it. You'd think it would be so simple, wouldn't you? Do you think she loves me? I'd have thought so, wouldn't you? You don't go to all that trouble for someone you don't like. You don't bother to dance at all. As many she'd say. Well, to be fair, have you said it to her? 
Well, I love you. Have you? In so many words. Well, I think I've, I think I've shown it in the way that I... Takes two, Jake. Go on. Give it a try sometime. What's the worst she can say? Too bad, Buster. That's what I'm afraid of. <sighs> Plenty more girls, aren't there? Young bloke like you. Huh? She's after me. Oh God, now what? Who's after you, Pearl? Uh, she said she'd get us and now she's out to get me. Oh Pearl, for goodness sake, who is out to get you? If you'd only... Oh dear God. Uh, oh. Pearl? Izzy, what are you doing? I just want to talk to her, Patricia. That's all. I just want to talk. Well, why have you got a knife? Do you need a knife to talk to Pearl? I caught them, you see. I caught them. You cut them? Who did you cut? I, I cut the guys. I cut right through the guys. Which guys, Izzy's? Who are you talking about? I didn't mean to cut them. I thought it were them. No, I didn't mean to cut no one. I thought it were them. Izzy, just give me the knife, please. No. Warn. We need Warn. Jake, can you fetch him here? He may be able to sort this out. Will you be all right? Just to find Warn. Unless she's killed him. Oh God, I hadn't thought of that. Izzy, you haven't killed Warn, have you? You, you haven't hurt Warn. Oh God, we'd never find another gardener. I didn't mean to hurt no one. I, I just caught the guys. Who's she talking about? I don't know who she's talking about. Off you go, quick as you can. <sighs> Izzy, would you please put down the knife? Then we can all talk properly. I'm going to bring Pearl out here and then we can all talk about this sensibly. There's no need for knives. There's never any need for knives. Pearl? Pearl? Don't let her in here. Pearl, come out from behind there. I, I'm, I'm coming in. She's not coming in. She's not. It, it's only me. I, I, I'm coming in. Oh, dear God, it's getting like a war zone. Pearl, please don't do that. That is not helping. If you do that again, I shall dock it from your money. Now, Pearl, I'm coming in. Oh, Lord. Izzy, can't you do something? If you want to throw the plates, can you throw the service with the gold rim? You've already broken so many of those, it doesn't matter. But not the Crown Derby, please. Oh, I don't know what to do. I really don't know what to do. I think I'm going to go to bed. Oh. Pearl, I am fast losing patience, Pearl. <coughs> oh, that was, that was the Crown Derby. I recognised it. Oh. Warren, thank heavens. He was already on his way. Warren, can you possibly sort this out? Give that to me. Cut yourself. In there. Pearl. 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 Who is it? Well, who do you think? It's Warren. Pearl Jamie, come on out now, it's Warren. Oh, come on then, girl, it's... It's... It's Dad. It's your Dad. Oh, Warren! Dad. Dad. Come on, go on now. He never would before, you see. He never would. I said to him when I moved in, I said, now it's got to be different, you see. With me being her mum, that makes you her like her dad. It don't matter what he was before, he has to be a dad now. Mum's moved in, don't he? Besides, Pearl never had a dad. Not originally. Because he pissed off the bugger. And I never saw him again, no, not after that one night. And a girl needs a dad. She needs someone to clip around the ear. Only one never would, you see, because he thought it were wrong. But God, 
<laughs> but it can't never be wrong for a girl to have a dad. But it's going to be all right now, you see, because, well, because now we're all, we're all proper and circumcised at last. <laughs> can't pretend to understand what that was all about. As I was saying, love is essentially a very simple business, but in the hands of human beings it can get monstrously complicated. Teddy and Lucille arrive at the French windows. They are both extremely bedraggled and wet and muddy. She has no shoes. He has no shoes, socks or trousers. Trish and Jake stare at them. Slamming it behind her. The lights fade to blackout. Act two, scene two. Five p.m. Gavin is standing by the windows. Teddy comes in from the hall. He has now changed and smartened up a bit. <sighs> Oh, oh, there you are, Gavin. Teddy, I'm just off. I've said goodbye to Trish. I just wanted to thank you for a fabulous day. Thoroughly enjoyable. Oh, uh, yes? Uh, good, good. I do envy you all this. I mean, stuck in the smoke there, you really forget what real life's about, don't you? I do hope you'll ask me down again sometime. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Always welcome. <laughs> Will you say goodbye to Sally for me? I'm afraid I've managed to miss her. Yes, I'll, I'll say. Lovely girl, Teddy. You must be very proud. Bright as a button, isn't she? Good brain on her. Mm, yes. Yes, true. <laughs> I don't, don't know where she gets that from, I'm sure. <laughs> no, seriously, Teddy. Oh. Credit to you both. I think there's a great deal for the future of this country if we've got young people like that in the pipeline. Yes, it does. Yes, true. <laughs> well, I... Um, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I take it that the offer of political candidacy is not well, currently seen in the cards. Well, I, I think... No, 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 a, just wanted to clear it up. <laughs> you know, Teddy, seeing you here amongst all this, the social life, the family, the commitment you have to the local people, the irons in the fire, so many fish to fry. I just don't think you'd have time for it all, Teddy. With the best will in the world, I mean, these days an MP's job, nose to the grindstone, Teddy. And let's face it, desperately single-track staff. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, if I was to sum you up, which I shall be doing, incidentally, to the PM when I see him, I'd be tempted to describe you as a good old-fashioned renaissance man, Teddy. Oh, would you? Would you? God, God bless you. I wish there were more of you. Bloody specialisation be the death of us all. <laughs> That's always been my view. <laughs> so, short answer, don't expect a call. But not to worry, I'll explain to the PM your reasons for turning it down, and as you know, he's nothing if not reasonable. I know he'll be absolutely flat-batted, but I'm certain he'll understand. Okay, moustache, don't see me off, please. I know you've got masses to do. Take care, old boy, wonderful to see you. I'll be in touch very soon. Bye. Bye. Incidentally, terrific wine, too. Ah, oh, well, can't win them all, I suppose. And um, she's about ready to go now. I'm going to fetch the car and I'll bring it round the front, all right? Oh, no, no, don't bother. I'll, um, I'll walk Lucy and down to the garden. Sure? Yeah, say goodbye properly, you know? Well, don't take any more detours, will you? I have to deliver her to that place and then get back to London tonight. Uh, how long do you reckon she's going to be staying there? No idea. A week or so. Why? Well, I just thought I might visit her, you know? I must get a bit dull in those places. Suit yourself. Just do us a favour and take her a bunch of flowers if you do. Teddy. Oh my god. Oh. Do not do that to me, Trish. Oh. Sorry. I have something to say to you. 
Oh, well, super. Three weeks of total silence and something to get in the speech, are we? Teddy. Oh, whoopee, I cannot wait. Teddy. Hang on one tip, I'll get the cassette recorder out. Just in case these are the last words you ever say to me, like a permanent record, you know? These are the wife's last words. I thought you might want to have a listen. Teddy, mm. these may well be my last words to you. They might well. What? You, you, you haven't, um, you haven't done anything stupid, have you? Like what? I don't know, taken poison or something. No, of course I haven't. If I was going to poison anybody, it would be you. <laughs> you haven't, have you? Teddy, the point is, I'm leaving. I've tried to avoid this. It's against everything I stand for. Desertion, walking off the sink. But I can feel it, Teddy. The curse of the Platt women. It's there, breathing heavily, just behind me. I have to go. I'm sorry. I've discussed this with Sally, and she completely understands. She said if it wasn't for her A-levels, she'd come with me. So you won't be entirely abandoned. You'll also have Izzy, and you'll have Pearl. God help you. You'll have masses of people to look after you, so don't worry. Just no wife. We haven't had a wife for ages, Teddy. What are you talking about? More important, with me out of the way, you can have a clear run of the field. Droit de seigneur. Whatever you fancy. I see. That's all I wanted to say. So, cheerio, really. I wish I could say it's been fun, but these last few years have been utter hell. I don't know how I've put up with it for as long as I have, actually. Come on, Trish. You had a few laughs. Teddy, we haven't even smiled. Not for years. Still, no hard feelings. Oh, God, you're a reek of whiskey. I'll leave this evening. I'll take the small car. I can never part the jag. Where are you going? What's it matter? Oh, voila! <laughs> a superman! <laughs> Je quitte mon mari. Je vais habiter à Londres. À Londres? Uh, vous avez un amant là-bas? <laughs> non, seulement un seul. Oh. Pauvre Teddy. Oui, pauvre Teddy. Vous pourriez pour être passé un jour pour lui remonter la morale. D'accord. Hey, is anybody allowed in on this bloody conversation, or do I have to wait for the subtitles? Lucille says, poor old you, and she'll look in on you on her way back from the clinic and have a drink with you. Uh, oh, jolly good. <laughs> Teddy, va vous accompagner à votre voiture? Belle vie. I'll, I'll, um, I will see you to the car, Lucille. Uh, Trish, I'm seeing her to the car. We'll be here when I get back. Possibly. No, no, hang on. We need to talk about this some more, Trish. Not really, we don't. I mean, I, I don't know where everything's kept. No, no, please, don't go. For God's sake, don't go until I'm back. Au revoir. Au revoir. No. Sorry, Cat. This one's breaking with tradition, I'm afraid. She's getting out while she can still walk. Oh, nice bath. Aren't you getting dressed again? It's early for bed, isn't it? Not even six o'clock. Don't you want me to go now? Is that it? An hour ago, you told me I should. I don't care. Well, thank you. Doesn't matter one way or the other, I take it. Nothing I say is going to make any difference anyway, is it? Oh, of course it is. Do you want me to go or not? Yes. I don't want you to go, but I think you should. For your sake. You can come and visit me in London, at Kirsty's. You're always looking for excuses to come to London, aren't you? You are. Oh, 
Don't make this more difficult than it already is, please, Sally. I don't think I want to go to London anymore. Why not? I don't belong in London. <laughs> I belong down here. I'm an ignorant, bumptious, stupid country lump, like everyone else. Oh, for God's sake. What are you talking about, stupid? At school, you're straights ahead of anyone. You're captain of this and head of that. Tiny little fish in a minuscule puddle. That's all. Oh, I'm not talking to you when you're like this. Everything I say is wrong. Well, it's true, isn't it? It is not true. And what's more, if you've listened to yourself, you'd realise what an arrogant thing that is to say, because it implies that everyone around you is incredibly stupid. And if that is genuinely what you believe, then, Sally, I promise you, you are in for a very rough ride indeed. Because although you are extremely bright, and I'm terribly proud of you, as you go on, you are going to meet lots and lots of people who are equally as bright as you, and some, dare I say it, even brighter. And if you continue to look down your nose on the rest of the human race and don't start to show it a little more respect, then I promise you, you are in for one hell of a life, darling. Now, excuse me, I'm going to pack a suitcase. Hi. Hello. You're very cheerful. Yeah, sorry. Um, you're very gloomy. What do you want? I, uh, I came to apologise, really. What for? This morning in the garden. I read your private poem and I shouldn't have done. I'm just, I'm just very sorry. You had every right to be angry with me. I was angry because you'd obviously been through my folder. That's all. Well, actually, I hadn't. But, but I can understand that you think I might have done. So, uh, anyway, I'm here to make amends. What's this? It's my folder. I bought it so you could go through my folder. Really? Go on. No, I don't want to. Don't be silly. Take it, please. Please. Now open it. Go on. Snoop through everything. I don't mind. I'm really not... Please. Please. What's this? It's for you. Thank you. I got it from the flower stall at the fete. Yes. Thanks very much. Secondly. What? Um, I think we should, we should both go, both go somewhere tonight. Jake, honestly, I... I don't care what we do, but I think we should go somewhere. Uh, the pub, the disco, a drive, a walk, it doesn't matter. I think I could face. It's now half past five, and after all that's happened to us today, if you sit around here on your own till bedtime, you're going to be suicidal. We both are, let's face it. Yes. You're quite right. Good. I'll get dressed. Come back for me in an hour. Right, great. <laughs> um, thirdly. What? Thirdly, I have something else to tell you. Yes? I. I'll tell you later on. All right. <laughs> Why can't you say it, you pillock? I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I, I am... Um, um, I forgot my rose. I love you. What? I love you. I, I um, I hear. Uh... Now what did I do? I'll never understand women. I know I won't. I'll never understand them. Never. And another thing you... Oh. Yes. Yes. Ah, oh, well. That's life, I suppose. Trish goes out into the hall. In a moment, the front door slams. The lights fade to blackout.
Nadia and I would like to thank you so much for coming to watch our production of House by Alan Akebourne, and we hope that you're excited for Garden on Friday, or that you enjoyed it on Wednesday night. Um, we ask that if you're able to do so, um, that you donate to our two amazing chosen charities, Industry Minds and Black Lives Matter UK, uh, which are both on our fundraising page, the links to which are all over the Grad Fringe Fest social media pages. Now, without further ado, we would like to say a massive, massive, huge thank you to the cast for their hard work and passion over the last couple of weeks. We couldn't have done any of this without them. We'd also like to say a massive thank you to our technical support, uh, Cynthia Chung and Jack Cray. Without them, none of this would have been possible, so thank you very much. And now on to the virtual curtain call. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been watching. Teddy Platt, played by Adam Rutledge. Trish Platt, played by Amber Wadey. Sally Platt, played by Sarah Dare. Gavin Ringmain, with a Y, played by Nick Kane. Lucille Cadeau, played by Emily George. Fran, played by Emma O'Connell. Joanna Mace, played by Alice Gold. Giles Mace, played by Callum Henderson. Jake Mace, played by Luke Stone. Izzy, played by Ray Bell. Pearl, played by Emily Britton. Lindy, played by Megan Kerris Holland. Barry, played by Josh Barnett. Warren, played by Richard Aaron.